<laughs> I jumped too. <laughs> hey, how, Hi, how are Keith. you? Good morning. Welcome to Scarif Harbour. How are you keeping? I'm in grateful. You're going to let me know. The first thing to do before you step on is to put on the life vest. No problem. Oh, I trust you with my life, Keith. It's just gentle on the throttle. And we're away. Where are we off to today? About a two hour journey. Discover Loch Darg from the inside out. And now we're away, Keith, in the beautiful Scarif River, as I said, opening up into Loch Darg. I like the view. You need to see the whole picture. And you get the whole picture when you're coming down the lake or you're on the water. You can see it in its beauty. Every corner is a view of the water. You can see the full expanse of the lake. It's phenomenal. If I want to stop and have a go up Ballycogran on the way, we're going to stop in there for a little bit. Leaving the cruiser at Two Mile Gate, Keith sets out on one of his favourite regular walks, Ballycogran Hill. seeing things that you kind of pass by and I had a chance to look and, and, and fully see them on this trip from the lichens on the tree to the moss to some of the wildlife and even in the silence inside in the forest to listening to the chiff chaff and to some of the finches chirping in the background. This is one of my favourite parts of Killaloo and my favourite parts in the Ballycogran Walk. We run this most weekends, um, myself and a couple of my friends. And suddenly you get this vista. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, there's a different perspective around every single corner. You see the whole expanse of the lake from standing on top of these wooden logs. There really is something incredible up here. It's solitude, it's quiet, it's wildlife. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen the hen harrier just around this corner. On the lake, it's only a few kilometres from Two Mile Gate to Killaloo. Every part of Keith's journey is particularly scenic. I always think when you're out on the, on the lake, I do love it when you turn the corner and you see Bale Baru, it's Brian Baru's fort. And on my right, the, the cracking vista of Bale Baru. You can't get it by water, but we'll walk up it in, in a while. A thousand year old fort for this crossing. It used to be able to walk across here a thousand years ago. It's something that's a bit mystical uh, about that area, it always has been. It's the crossing point for Sarsfield. Um, but then you turn the corner and you can see the town and you know you're home. Keith's final meeting is at Brian Baru's fort to say hello to Una Kearns, the daughter of his favourite school teacher. I think you're formed by people that you've met and experiences you've had. And I was very lucky that, you know, to, to have Sean Kearse as a, as a headmaster, um, I got a love of history. And it's great to see that the mantle has been carried on by his daughter, Una. But she also has, you know, that love for her father's work. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her take on it. Hi, Una, Hi, how Keith. are you? How are you? Excellent, thank you. Fabulous down here today, isn't it? Is. it? I love it. I mean, this site was chosen a thousand years ago as a fort. Why? 
As you know, we're here on the slopes of Crag Hill, right where, where it slopes down to Loch Derg. And this is a very strategic point because it's the narrowest point in the lake where Loch Derg flows back into the River Shannon just as it enters Killaloo. So the point here is quite narrow and back in Brian Bruce's time it was quite shallow and it's where cattle tributes were paid um, to Brian and indeed to his father and grandfather before him and the cattle would have crossed from the Tipperary side um, to here back then. You can see all the way up to King Cora. And King Cora in Killaloo at the highest point of the town is where Brian Bruce's palace was. Um, where he lived during his reign as High King. It's been an amazing journey, but it's kind of lovely to be in this well, quiet place now. It, it is lovely and quiet, and I suppose, it, you know, it has never changed. Yeah. And that's probably what's nice about it. It's, it's, it's never going to change, hopefully. But it is, it's a, it's a special place. Great to talk to Thanks, you. Thanks, Una. At the start of this journey, I, I'd said that I'd taken an awful lot for granted. And do you know what? This whole day has just shown me how true that actually is. There is everything to be seen in this area. Oh, the whole part of this journey touches on things that I that I love. You know that maybe people would know about, but uh, I've been a bird watcher all of my life. To see uh, jays down in Brian Brew's fort, to go and see the sea eagles. I love meeting Andrew inside in the forest and just seeing the enthusiasm. The, the, the pure joy he has, almost in his natural element, um, and knowing that they're interests that I have, that we have collected acorns and seedlings, we have been trying to plant down in Clarisford trees that were there for hundreds of years, we know that we need to replenish them. I love the idea of going kayaking for the first time, but the waves were two feet uh, tall and splashing over the bow, and it was hard work to start with, but I loved it. I loved the fact that I didn't tumble in out of the water much of them as I nearly did on, on, on getting out of the boat. <laughs> in the midst of this journey, we kayaked, we hiked, we got on a boat. There's so much to do in this area. There's so much to do in all of Ireland. Um, so much of it is free and so much of it is a low cost. You just have to, you know, grab the opportunity to go and see your country at its best. <laughs>